I struggle to imagine any single thing that has done more damage to the software we use every day than patents. You can make an argument for Electron, but patents honestly are much worse. The idea of a patent is great. If you make something truly unique and put through the effort to make it real, you should have some protection of that thing so a big company with a lot of money can't just immediately clone it and get really successful. That idea is great in concept, but in practice, the results have been rough to say the least. There's this whole category of industry now called patent trolling, where companies get the rights to patents they don't actually intend to use for anything meaningful, just so that they can sue other companies and charge them for licensing of these patents when the company doesn't use anything from it. They had no idea the patent existed. They're not trying to use that piece of software. They're just trying to build something basic, like an app on the App Store or a protocol for doing video stuff live. And so many companies, big and small, have been screwed with this. Developers absolutely need the right to challenge junk patents. And if we're not careful, things might get even worse starting December 2nd. I'm very lucky to have a platform like this with thousands of people and developers in particular who come to me to learn about all the things going on in software. And I'm gonna use that platform to my best ability today because I think it is essential for us to jump in front of this change before it makes things worse for the entire industry. It horrifies me to think about how many incredible things would exist today if it wasn't for software patents blocking them. And the idea of it getting worse it is horrifying enough that I need to raise the alarm bell. If we want to make the software world great, we have to fight back on these things. I think it's fair to say that right now, patents aren't great for software developers. Do you know what is great for developers though? Today's sponsor. Okay, sorry about the sponsor interruption. We do have bills to pay and I will commit some of this money to any charitable org I can possibly throw money at to make this more likely to happen. But we need to stop this change from going through. The U.S. Patent and Trademark Office has proposed a new rule. The office is proposing new rules of practice before the PTAB to focus inter-party reviews before proceeding on patent claims that have not previously been challenged in litigation or where prior litigation was resolved at an early stage. Supposed rules intended to promote fairness, efficiency, and predictability in patent disputes. So it's trying to make it harder to do a dispute on a patent that hasn't been disputed in the past or the dispute failed early. This new rule would make it much harder to challenge bad patents through inter-parts reviews. But this time, the rule is much worse for developers and startups, and that's a serious concern. Congress created IPRs so that those who are most vulnerable to weaponized patents, like startups and developers, could challenge whether a patent should have even been granted efficiently and fairly without the cost of a full-blown federal litigation. Yeah, it's important that we have processes to make it so someone who doesn't have unlimited money can challenge bullshit patents. Preserving this ability strengthens American innovation, open source, and small business growth. I really hope that this is a thing we can all agree on, regardless of our political stances. If you're a communist, capitalist, or anything between the two, we can agree that small teams and individuals should be able to make things that they want to make without big companies, corporations, and organizations preventing them from doing it because of a bullshit thing they filed a century ago that has never actually been used. Just for one fun example, I couldn't remember the name, so I T3-chatted it. There's this company, Lodsys, that has a patent on the concept of distributing upgrades to software over the internet. The patent is on an online backup system, which they later used to sue a ton of people. And what they do is they wait till an app is popular enough, and then they target the developer of the app with litigation and threatening to sue them if they don't pay some weird bullshit fee because they are doing updates, or in this case, they are selling features for the app that are enabled through the internet. This denial happened all the way back in 2013, where Apple tried to sue this patent troll because app developers on the app store were being affected, and none of them could afford to sue them. And they lost this battle. And apparently it was dismissed because multiple of the iOS devs were so panicked that they caved and paid Lodsys, thereby showing the patent is valid and actionable, that is the service that they sell with the patent is these licenses. And since some devs caved, now the whole case is thrown out. It's absurd. The patent in question covers methods and systems for gathering information from units of a commodity across a network, which apparently translates to in-app purchases. Do you understand how fucking stupid that is? I want to find when this patent was filed. If my understanding is correct, this patent was originally filed in the 80s and granted 97. 
that is so fucking stupid. And they never used it for anything. It's just a generic bullshit patent. And there's so many examples of things like this that piss me off to no end. Here's a fun one that a lot of people might not know about. Hopefully I don't get DMCA'd for this. It is fair use and I will fight if I get DMCA'd for it. Here's another fun one that a lot of people don't seem to know about. I know everyone thinks of Apple as this evil, greedy company that doesn't believe in open source and open standards. What if I told you they tried? And that they tried really, really hard. You know FaceTime, that video call thing that some Apple people use to talk to their family and friends? What if I told you that was supposed to be an open standard? You probably wouldn't believe me, unless you've already seen the original iPhone 4 reveal. Check this out. Time is based on a lot of open standards. H.264 video, AAC audio, and a bunch of alphabet soup acronyms. <laughs> and we're going to take it all the way. We're going to the standards bodies starting tomorrow, and we're going to make FaceTime an open industry standard. <laughs> so, FaceTime was planned to be an open standard. So why the hell can I only use FaceTime on iPhone, iPad, and macOS? Why can't I use it on my Android phone or on my Windows PC or anything else? Because their attempt to combine all of those technologies into a single standard, specifically, if I recall, I might be wrong about this, the combination of data transfer methods along with a peer-to-peer -peer routing with the stun and turn servers and an audio video feed, the combination of these types of connection methods and technologies was patented, and they got patent trolled out of making the standard open. It was Vernet X who argued that their patents on VPNs and secure DNS-based connections. So it was the way of connecting users over peer-to-peer -peer using a DNS to create that connection. That was patented, and Apple gave up on the fight because it just wasn't worth it. They're putting all of this effort and money in to make something an open standard, with the chance of losing and potentially having to give up on FaceTime entirely. So instead, they locked it down and made it slightly different to try and get around the patents and then never released the final version as an open standard. It sucks, but this is annoyingly common. These things happen all the time. Don't get me started on the state of the camera industry and how bullshit patents have fucked up cameras forever. I think about this so often that my first ever viral video was on my second channel bitching about the Red Camera Company because they patented the concept of compressed raw video on camera. Not a method, although they did patent their codec as well. Apple has a codec called ProRes Raw that they effectively give out for free. And you cannot put it on a camera unless you pay a ransom fee to the company Red. So I get Apple's codec for free from Apple, and then I pay $1,000 to Red per fucking camera to put Apple's codec on it, because that codec is illegal to run on a camera, because the concept of running a compressed raw codec on a camera is somehow owned by Red. Apple lost their lawsuit, DJI lost their lawsuit, Sony lost their lawsuit, Canon lost their lawsuit, and Nikon was about to lose their lawsuit before deciding to just buy Red outright, and they have stopped enforcing this patent pretty much entirely. So huge bro move to Nikon for killing this. For every one example where another company steps up and fixes it, there are hundreds where they don't. And I am so fucking tired of this. I see it all of the time. Hell, I just saw this on Twitter a few days ago. Amjad, who is the CEO of Replit, patented the little joystick for navigating through code that they put on top of their keyboard for their mobile app. And he was very proud to say this. Our mobile team was recently awarded this patent on a syntax-aware touch-based code navigation joystick. <sighs> Amjad, we're on pretty good terms. I got no beef with you. You got no beef with me. I just hope you understand the very scary rabbit hole you're opening here, being that you built a platform that makes it trivial for any person, developer or not, to violate patents at a rapid rate. I'm almost tempted to go see how many patents I can violate with a single prompt on Replit. The issue is I'd have to go read a whole bunch of patents to do that, and then I could be sued for anything at any point. The, the details of this are messy. Like, allegedly, if you read patents and there's a provable history of you reading patents and then you implement something that's close enough, it makes your case worse. But yeah, being that Replit could hypothetically be used to massively increase a non-developer's rate of patent violations, I'd be careful putting things into the space. Just to be as good faith as possible here, 
Fire calls out, this is hopefully just defensive against patent trolls, to which Amjad said yes. I don't know if this is admissible in court, but I am going to screenshot it just in case. Yeah, <laughs> these things are scary. I hope he is being real here, but uh, yeah, pay attention to these things. It's important that uh, we don't let companies go too far with this stuff. And the fact that he's bragging about being awarded the patent is like the first thing, like, like saying the patent part before what it does says a lot to me. But I, I could just be overreading this. But from what I've seen others say, I don't think I am. Back to this GitHub article, though, because it's actually quite good. Minus some issues I have with the formatting. Back in 2023, there was a proposal that would have added procedural hurdles for the process to let smaller groups of people, small startups and individuals, challenge bullshit patents. They were going to make this harder in 2023. But even with those hurdles, developers and startups would still always have their own path to challenge low-quality patents. 2025 proposal is different. It would impose bright line rules that block IPR petitions in many common scenarios, such as when a claim has ever been upheld in any forum or when a parallel case is likely to finish first. It would also require petitioners to give up all invalidity defenses in court if they pursue an IPR. That is actually terrifying. So if you do think a patent's invalid and you choose to use the IPR rule to challenge it and you fail, you have now admitted guilt to using this patent and all invalidity defenses can no longer be used when you try to fight this suit that's almost inevitable at that point. These changes would prevent developers from challenging the patents whenever some other party tried and failed. This makes IPR far less accessible, increasing litigation risk and cost for developers, startups, and open source projects. I just remembered one more example I want to dive into here so you guys understand just how insane this all is. I had a vague memory of this, so I again T3 chatted it. Sorry for using AI. I know patents, AI, conflicting, whatever. Fun thing I remembered is that there's a specific courthouse in Texas that is full of judges that don't really seem to understand software at all. So it's become the courthouse of choice for these patent trolls to file bullshit lawsuits. There are lots of companies that aren't really companies producing software. They call themselves software firms, but they're actually legal firms that own the rights to a bunch of patents they don't use, sit inside of the East District of Texas, and just file bullshit lawsuits constantly. There are dozens of these companies, these entities, that are literally just a pile of lawyers and patents that sit in Texas, walk up to this courthouse, and file bullshit lawsuits for hundreds of millions of dollars in case some of them happen to go through. It's actually fucking insane. The funny thing I remembered was that Samsung's been cooked so hard there, they actually got a Samsung ice skating rink that they put out in front of the courthouse as an attempt to build good faith within the town because they were being sued so often there. Some of the sources that were found by T3Chat here include Samsung getting hit with a $445 million lawsuit over some wireless patents, McCool Smith getting a $191 million settlement against Samsung. And those are just two of the many. I've seen more. Like Samsung's probably a billion plus dollars down on these bullshit lawsuits. It's so common. It's so absurd. This is where I remember seeing it. A quarter of all patent cases are filed in Marshall, Texas. And believe me, it is not because people there are inventing like a meth head in a Home Depot aisle. <laughs> <laughs> You get the idea. I'm pumped that this made it this far and like people are now aware of it, as well as the ice skating rink, because this is definitely where I remember seeing it. See all those Samsung logos on the ice skating rink in front of the courthouse? This seems like a sitcom. Like this doesn't feel real. It's so absurd that we've gone this far and still yet nothing's been done. What the fuck? So what can we do? Well, at the very least, we can try our best to prevent this bullshit from going through. Innovation isn't about patents, it's about people writing code, collaborating, and building tools that power the world. GitHub's inclusion in the WIPO Global Innovation Index reflects how developers and openness drive progress. Policies that close off avenues to challenge bad patents that block innovation don't just affect lawyers, they affect the entire ecosystem that makes innovation possible. We're calling on developers, startups, and open source organizations, and now I'm calling on YouTubers and content creators and influencers in the space as well who are going to be impacted by these rules to file comments underscoring the broad concerns that patent trolls pose to innovation. File a comment and make your voice heard before the comment period closes on December 2nd. I am in the middle of filming live right now, and I'm still going to take the time to leave this comment. 
The link is in the description. If you're an American developer or an American citizen that has strong opinions on this, I implore that you file your comments as well. This cannot go through. Unless we want the EU to win, then I guess we could let it happen. But I like America being a country where innovation can happen. So I'm going to do this. So if you're here now live and you want to go join me in filing this, feel free. I have written my comment to the federal regulations board that is making their decision here. I'm Theo, known online as T3.GG. I am a developer educator and influencer who has helped millions of developers improve their skills. I've also helped thousands of startups through the early stages of growth, going from ideas to billion dollar businesses. Current state of software patents has prevented innovation for decades. Independent developers and small teams need more support to challenge invalid patents that prevent them from innovating. I've seen startups drained of all their resources by legal firms holding patents they do not even use. I believe in an America where builders can build, innovate, and create more success for our nation. If we want to stay on top, we need to do everything in our power to support these innovators as they develop the future of technology. If we don't, we will lose to other nations that better protect these developers. We should not let patent trolling legal firms dictate how much innovation is allowed in our nation. IPR is one of the few tools these innovators have to fight back. It is my belief that IPR and the protections it grants should go further to protect those building and innovating in the US. This proposal serves to reduce the strengths of IPR. This proposal runs against the very values that America was built upon. Small businesses and individuals deserve the right to build and innovate. Without IPR, the lawyers will assure that there is no innovation ever occurring again. I implore that you rethink this proposal. I know millions of devs, and I do not know a single one who thinks this proposal is a good idea. I think that is a good enough filing. And my comment has been submitted successfully. I highly recommend that you guys all do the same. It is very important that we protect those who are trying to innovate in our nation. It's one of those things that's really important to me. And if I'm going to have this platform, I think it's important to use it. Please share this with all the other builders and innovators you know, the people who understand how bad software patents have been for development as a whole. I want to make sure people who have unique novel ideas and the ability to execute on them can continue doing such without lawyers preventing it from happening. This is something that's really important to me, and I hope you guys understand as well. If I am just off on some crazy thing here and you guys don't agree, let me know in the comments. But if you agree, I insist that you file a comment, not on this video, but on the link in the description. I hope this was helpful, and until next time, please don't let the patent trolls win.